Last nine minutes, you, you should. All right, I have no problem. Could we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, as we are gathered here once again to examine the nation's business, we ask for your guidance, your strength, your understanding. Help us to make the right decisions in the interests of the Jamaican people, especially our vulnerable women, children, and everyone who may need assistance. So we ask you, Heavenly Father, to give us the wisdom to make the right decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Minister Chuck. We'll make you the chaplain. <laughs> um, apology for absence. Um, MP Sibylis has asked uh, me to apologize for his absence. Uh, Senator Gale is here. He had indicated he'd be a little late, but I'm happy to see he's here. Um, Minister Johnson Smith has asked to tender her apology for arriving. She will be arriving late. All right. So, colleagues. Senator, I'm sorry, Minister. Senator Sophia Fraser Baines is also asking for um, apologies, extending apologies. She'll be late. She'll, she'll be here, but she'll be arriving late. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Now, um, we have much to accomplish today, but before we commence, let me make some brief remarks. Since the constitution of this committee, we have steadily worked at ensuring that this seminal piece of legislation ensures protection for all genders in workplaces, in institutions, and in residential and business settings. The dutiful diligence that we have displayed over these many months is a testament to our commitment to making Jamaica a safe place to live, to work, to raise families, and to do business. Our deliberations today will take us through the draft report put together by our hardworking committee clerk, line by line, all with a view to produce a finalized report to lay before the parliament. My expressions of thanks to you committee members, technical team, committee clerk, the IT team, Hansard writers and houses of parliament staff. My expressions of appreciation can never be enough. Our work in this committee continues to be carried live by the Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica, PBCJ, online and on television. And I also want to thank them for the exposure they've given to us. Having said all of that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to work. Thank you. I will ask that we share the screen Share the report on the screen. Um, hmm, that's going to be a little difficult to read. Miss um, Grant, can members follow this screen here? Is that better, Minister? I, I put it in read mode. Yes, it could be a little larger. Uh, Is right. that can members can members um follow the text on the screen I shared? Yes, chair. Okay, fine. And Miss Grant, you will we you will manipulate the the document, and I will read. Yes, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll move the screen accordingly. All right, fine. So, members, if we could follow, we will. Okay, so we will start by 
report of the Joint Select Committee to consider and report on the bill entitled, quote, open quote, the Sexual Harassment Act 2020, close quote. One, establishment, composition, and terms of reference of the committee on July 16, 2019, the Honorable Livergreen, CD MP, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, moved, yes, moved, be it resolved that this Honorable House appoint a special select committee comprising the following members. Honorable Livia Grange, Honorable Del Rocha, Mr. Franklin Whittle, Mrs. Marissa Dalrymple Philibert, Ms. Anne-Marie Vaz, Ms. Natalie Nita, Mr. Horace Daly, Dr. Angela Brownberg. To sit jointly with a similar committee to be appointed by the Senate to consider and report on a bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2019. On August, and so we would, as we go along, we make the corrections. On August 2, 2019, the Honorable Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and Leader of Government Business, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, further moved, the Sexual Harassment Act 2019, be it resolved that this honorable Senate appoint a special select committee comprising the following members. Senator Kevin Gale, CD. Senator Dr. Sophia Longmore. Senator Carencia Morrison. Senator Donna Scott Motley. Senator Sophia Fraser Bates, to sit jointly with a similar committee appointed by the House of Representatives to consider and report on the bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2019. Members of this honorable house are reminded that on October 6, 2020, the Honorable Olivia Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, moved. Be it resolved that this honorable house appoint a select committee comprising the following members. Honorable Olivia Grange, CDMP. Honorable Del Rocha, QCMP. Mr. Franklin Witter, MP. Ms. Carencia Morrison, MP. Ms. Rhoda Moy Crawford, MP. Ms. Tamika Davis, MP. Ms. Joyce Denise Daly, MP. Dr. Angela Brownberg, MP. To sit jointly with a similar committee to be appointed by the Senate to consider and report on a bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020. Whereas on October 9, 2020, the Honorable Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, further moved. Be it resolved that this Honorable Senate appoint a committee comprising the following members. Senator Kevin Gale, CD. Senator Dr. Sophia Longmore, Senator Natalie Campbell Rodriguez, Senator Donna Scott Motley, Senator Gabriella Morris, to sit jointly with a similar committee appointed by the House of Representatives to consider and report on the bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020. On November 3, 2020, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett, CDMP, 
and leader of the House, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, moved. Be it resolved with reference to the resolution approved by this Honorable House on the sixth day of October 2020, appointing a special select committee comprising the following members to sit jointly with a similar committee appointed by the Senate to consider and report on a bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020, that the names Dwight Sibley's and Lothian Cousins be added thereto. On November 13, 2020, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and Leader of Government Business moved the following motion. Be it resolved with reference to the resolution approved by this Honorable Senate on the ninth day of October 2020, appointing a special select committee comprising the following members to sit jointly with a similar committee appointed by the House of Representatives to consider and report on a bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020 that the names Kamina Johnson Smith and Sophia Fraser Bins be added thereto. On February 9, 2021, the Honorable Olivia Grange, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, having obtained suspension of the standing orders, moved, be it resolved, with reference to the select committee appointed by this honorable house on the sixth day of October, 2020, to sit jointly with a similar committee appointed by the Senate to consider and report on a bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020, that the committee be allowed to hold virtual meetings whether wholly virtual or partly virtual and partly physical, utilizing available information and communications technologies in the manner more specifically outlined below. Preserving the rights, powers and privileges, including voting rights, normally accorded to a member of a committee the committee is empowered to, one, convene and hold meetings in virtual spaces created using information and communications technologies, which shall be considered committee meetings for the purposes of its mandate. Two, allow access and participation from remote locations as are enabled by means of information and virtual technologies by members and other persons authorized by the committee. Three, include members accessing and participating from remote locations as a part of its quorum. Four, receive, consider, deliberate on, and respond to feedback and submissions in formats modes and media, and via platforms, modes and media, enabled by means of information and communications technologies from any person. Five, consider any and all information generated, communicated and received via formats, platforms, modes or media as enabled by means of information and communication technologies as forming a part of the record of these committee meetings. Members are further reminded that on February 9, 2021 and February 12, 2021, respectively, the leaders of the House of Representatives and the Senate moved, be it resolved 
with reference to the sessional select, joint select, and select committee, which are appointed in the current session of parliament, and where these committees have not completed their deliberations, that in the new session of parliament, both houses be empowered to enable these committees to proceed with the issues referred to them from the stage reached before prorogation. Be it further resolved that the composition of these committees remain unchanged except where necessary by further motion taken and approved by the Houses of Representatives and the Senate respectively. And be it further resolved with reference to the matters identified below, which are included in the order of business in this session of parliament, but for which deliberations have not been completed, that in the new session of parliament, both houses be empowered to proceed with them from the stage reached before prorogation. One, item one on the government business, the protected disclosure amendment of first schedule order 2021, and two, all matters referred to committees. Your committee initially commenced its deliberations during the 2019-2020 parliamentary session on November 28, 2019, and held six meetings to deliberate on the bill, Appendix 1A. The deliberations for your second committee started during the 2020-2021 parliamentary session on October 29, 2020, and held 15 meetings to deliberate on the bill, including eight virtual meetings to review, to review the matrix of submissions. If you are noting um, typos or grammatical errors, if you could just note those changes or those corrections. We completed our deliberations on the bill on April 22, 2021, Appendix 1B. Your committee at its first sitting on November 28, 2019, we decided to give an opportunity to stakeholders and the wider public to make submissions on the bill. In that regard, your committee wrote to the Norman Manley Law School, the University of the West Indies, Urimona, the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU, the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, Jamaicans for Justice, JFJ, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, the Jamaica Federation of Musicians, the Ministry of Health, and Wellness, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Justice, the Women's Resource and Outreach Center, ROC, the Jamaica Employers Federation, JEF, the Jamaica Bar, the Jamaican Bar Association, JAMBAR, the Jamaican Vintage Artists Association, the Rent Assessment Board, quote, the Ministry of Economic Growth, at parentheses, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, the Jamaica Household Workers Union, the Jamaica Council of Churches, the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuses, CISOCA, Woman Incorporated Crisis Center, Women's Media Watch, and the Jamaica Society for Industrial Security. Public notices inviting written submissions from individuals and organizations 
were also placed in the Jamaica Observer and the Sunday Gleaner on December 8, 2019 and July 20, 21. Your committee first appointed to consider and report on the act received submissions and oral presentations from the following groups. Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Ministry of Tourism, Jamaica Network of Seropositives, University of the West Indies, UWE Institute of Gender and Development Studies, Jamaica Coalition of Healthy Societies, Women's Empowerment for Change, We Change, Jamaica Lands, Hugh Shearer Labor Studies Institute Consortium for Social Development and Research, University of the West Indies, Jamaica AIDS Support for Life, and Mr. Douglas Sirotan. Sirotan. At its second meeting held on November 12, 2020, your newly appointed committee agreed to adopt the previous submissions and oral presentations heard. We received additional submissions and heard oral presentations from the following. Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Rent Assessment Board. Norman Manley Law School, Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU. Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, PSOJ. Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, JCC. Girls Who Know, JA, GWK, JA. Association of Women's Organization, OJA. Jamaica Household Workers Union. Jamaica Tertiary Education Commission, JTEC, Independent Jamaican Council for Human Rights, IJCHR, Seroptimist International Jamaica, Bureau of Gender Affairs, United Nations Development Program, UNDP, Jamaica, and Mr. Matondo K. Makulo. Technical teams were present from the Office of the Parliamentary Council, the Attorney General's Chambers, and the Legal Reform Department. Two, introduction. Overview. Um, okay, quote, this is another opportunity for victims to be protected whilst dealing. Sorry, Minister. <laughs> this is what happens with technology, sorry. There we go. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Overview, this is another opportunity for victim, victims to be protected whilst dealing appropriately with perpetrators. A signal must be sent to those who sexually harass women and men in employment, in institutions, or in landlord-tenant relationships that their days of getting away with it has come to an end. That support, Grange, November 27, 2019. In an article published by UN Women, New York, December 2018, entitled, Towards an End to Sexual Harassment, The Urgency and Nature of Change in the Era of Hashtag Me Too, it posited a def definition of sexual harassment as, quote, a human rights violation of gender-based discrimination, regardless of sex, in a context of unequal power relations, such as a 
workplace and slash or gender hierarchy, close quote. The article states that, quote, sexual harassment expresses and reinforces inequalities of power, close quote. And it creates, open quote, hostile or intimidating environments without relying on specific exchanges, end of quote. Sexual harassment therefore has deleterious effects on a person who is the target of such treatment. For far too long, victims of sexual harassment have been left without recourse, forced to cower in shame and retreat to the halls of silence. Vulnerable victims have recounted negative experiences resulting from being sexually harassed, particularly at the workplace, in learning or training institutions, hospitals, nursing homes, places of safety, and correctional centers, among others. The intent of the sexual harassment legislation is to address concerns about sexual harassment, which is employment related, occurring in institutions or arising in the context of relationship of a person who owns or leases or rents accommodation. Currently, there is no existing legislation that could be used as redress for a claim of sexual harassment since the specific concept is not included in any law in Jamaica. Victims of sexual harassment do not have recourse for sexual harassment, but could try to pursue other remedies if other criminal acts or labor violations occurred during the sexual harassment incident, which shows the lacuna in the law. The bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020 is aimed at providing legal protection and redress where a claim of sexual harassment is made, which is employment related. First, Minister. It, yes. I, I'm, I'm sorry, in that part, yes. uh, I know that the bill in terms of its um, short title includes prevention. Um, but in how we have said it here about what it is aimed at doing, it doesn't include um, prevention at all. And I thought that it would be important to include it, in particular because it's around public education and so on are important. And we persons tend to believe that we don't pay a lot of attention to that. And the bill actually includes prevention. Okay. Um, um. All right, so. okay. Sorry, Minister. Um, I just want to address it's what we have proposed is inside the, the report. The, um, but the title of the bill is currently the Sexual Harassment Act. And because we had agreed thereafter when it is tabled in the house, then it would have the correct name, the name that the committee agreed to. So right here it's not an error, it's basically what the bill is entitled to. Like. Um, oh, no, I'm, I'm not worried about what it is, what it is, what the title of the name. I'm just saying that we say in the report that it is aimed at providing legal protect, protection and redress. And in what its, its aims are, we don't include prevention. And I thought that that is something that we could have included in the report. But wouldn't that be included later on in the report, Ms. McCarthy? Yes, Minister. Yes, we will get to that, um, MP. So we are okay with starting up front by saying what the bill is aimed at doing and it doesn't um, include prevention. I'm just asking because I don't know why report, we wouldn't. The report will, 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 the report as we go through it, it will indicate the whole process and how we arrived at a final decision. Okay. Done, right, so this is reporting. I don't understand that, but I mean, if we all agree, that's fine. <laughs> I, I am clear that the bill as it is and after discussions include prevention, that's including correct. in the short title. I'm clear on that. I'm yes. just saying that 
since we are giving an overview and the overview doesn't put it, um, say this is where we started and then we ended, I can't understand why we would not have included here the notion that the bill is actually also aimed at prevention. Well, but, um, to be guided by the technical team in preparing a report, the report is written and, and as it evolves, we indicate so in the report as we go along. Please, yeah. I, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I think I'm seeing the point that Dr. Angela Brongbok is making. We should say at the beginning, it's aimed at providing legal um, pr um, protection and also provide for prevention and redress. Because it does, in, even though the title of the bill did not speak to protection and prevention, the provisions of the bill does seek to provide some sort of um does seek to provide for the prevention of sexual harassment. And what she's saying is that at the beginning, when we speak of the aims of the bill, we should also state that it provides for protection and prevention of sexual harassment. Thank you, Mrs. Celia Brown. Um, Ms. Grand, go ahead. Yes, Chair. This was. I had made some notes in the in the earlier section, the establishment section about some, some things that I picked up. So I was waiting until you finished the overview to see if you were going to go back there. Or should I just state what I noted now? I this think point? we should, you just go ahead and state here and we can make the necessary change. Okay, Chair. So the, where is it now? On the on the first uh, the first page, where there is a a V that needs to come out. I think Mrs. McCarthy has been making the notes, but I'm saying it nonetheless. There's a V on page one that needs to come out, and the uh, specifically where you say yes. Hmm. I think it would be uh, on the August 2, 2019. So that would have to come out. Uh, depend if you're if you're going to keep August 2, or you're going to say 2nd of August. So that they would have to come out. Um, um, I think it would be also the same for October, and where there's mention of the of house that the D would have to go in front of the house. Um, and I, yes, I think I think those those are those are the corrections that I noted. Um, sorry, Minister. There's also a correction in that section about the public notices. Um, uh, there is an additional date that I found um, that there was also a public notice on February 2, 2020. So I added that. Okay. So it's three dates that the public notices is about the Sorry, Chair. Also, they, they mentioned that was made there about the review of the matrix of submission. Uh, yeah. Something needs to be fixed there in that sentence. I don't remember what, but I remember you had also pointed to it. And Employers Federation, I believe, should be apostrophe S outside for employers. And in the second list of entities that was named, it didn't include Jamaicans for justice. Uh, in the in the list of entities that were taken by the second committee, so that would need to be inserted. Yes, I added that as well. Okay. All right. So those things have been noted and will be um, corrections will be made. All right. Now, in relation to the bill, shortly entitled, and its aim, um, can you indicate, uh, Mrs. Seely Brown, exactly what would be um, the, the amendment that would be made there. Just to include, um, Chair, that it, the bill would aim at providing for the prevention and protection of persons against sexual harassment. Right now, we only cover protection. And What's I the exact wording we should put there? Because uh -huh. we're not finalizing the copy. It will have to be... Um, 
the aim of providing for the prevention and protection of sexual harassment. So it will, you'll have to reword that the, the first line of the of, of, of the paragraph there. Ms. McCarthy will have to reword the first line. Aimed at is aimed at providing protection. Only prevention and provide yeah, prevention and, and protection of sexual harassment and seek also to redress um where a claim of sexual harassment is made with which is it. I'm not drafting no chair, but it's just to include the um, protection, I mean prevention in addition to protection, because that is what the bill seeks to do. Well, what, what I'd like though, because uh, this is the report and we are going line by line, I would like us to um, state exactly what that line would read going forward. I don't have Ms. Grant. It's aimed at providing prevention and protection, prevention, protection, and redress, is that what it would say? Where a claim of sexual harassment is made, is made, which is employment, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that would be the only amendment in this paragraph, members. Dr. Brownberg, you're fine here? Yes. Yes, yes, Minister. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So I'll just read this again. The bill shortly entitled the Sexual Harassment Act 2020 is aimed at providing prevention, comma, protection and redress where a claim of sexual harassment is made, which is employment related, occurs in educational institutions or arises in the context of accommodations. The passage of this piece of legislation to address claims of sexual harassment will deal an effective blow to sexual harassment, putting an end to the longstanding issue where both men and women commit sexual harassment without facing any repercussions. Its aim is to also embolden the voices of all women and men who are suffering the effects of being victims of sexual harassment, restore their confidence and provide a process of redress. Just a question there, was that meant to be those who were suffering the effects of being victims or should that be in the present continuous? Meaning should it be who are suffering or did we intend to say who it were suffering? Also embolden the voices of all women and men who... Right, is it were or, or did we mean were or is it are? Ms. McCarthy, Ms. Renanumid, who, so, who are suffering defects. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Right. Who are suffering um, defects. Could we, Madam Chair, could yes. we change that to who suffer yeah. the effects? Really? Take out that, no that verb, the R. So who suffer? Embolden the voices of all women and men who suffer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. of victims of sexual harassment, comma, restore their confidence and provide a process for redress. Are we fine? Yes, yes we are, yes I am. Okay, one fundamental area of concern in our deliberations was the treatment of children under this piece of legislation. We sought to determine whether the proposed leg legislation should be applicable to children. Issues such as any sexual interference of a child is generally a criminal matter. The age of consent being 16 years of age, which means only persons 16 years and older can legally consent to age in sexual activity as well as the applicability of the law to institutions of learning or training were considered. 
it was agreed that the sexual harassment bill should not apply to any person under the age of 16 years of age. And this would be given effect by inserting a specific provision in the bill to um, so we would remove two. A specific provision in the bill. Period. Chair? Yes? If I, I, I'm trying to remember what the put your, put your your camera on. Sorry, sorry, thank you. I'm good. Good morning, all. I'm trying to remember what was the final decision around age of consent and the alignment with 16 and 18 here. I don't think we could have um, made any decision on the alignment, but it was agreed that the sexual harassment bill should not apply to any person under the age of 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this would be given effect by inserting a specific provision in the bill, which means it would address 16 and over. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also agree to recommend that other relevant legislation be reviewed to ensure that there is no lacuna in the law as it relates to any sexual interference towards children. Minister, just to ask, um, yes. it, I know it would be helpful if we could cite some of those relevant legislation, or is it that we normally leave it this vaguely? I was just thinking that when the report goes to Parliament and we are looking at it to determine what our um, next steps are um, in terms of the gaps that the bill would not have covered and what we need to do, and because we have spent so much time looking at it, is it that we are unable to cite those relevant legislation, or is it that we don't normally do that? Guidance here, please. Um, Mrs. Cecilia Brown. I'm not sure if we should cite it, um, Chair, as, um, at this point in time, because we don't know where those amendments um, may be incorporated. It could be the Sexual Offenses Act, it could be another piece of legislation. So I think it is just sufficient there to say that we are going to propose that um, the relevant enactment be amended to ensure that um, there's no gap um, in dealing with this type of behavior towards children. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Um, Chair, Chair, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, though. I'm not sure that if I if I like the term sexual interference in the last paragraph, and I think we should probably speak to sexual advance, because that is where the discussion in relation to this issue um, came up when we, um, I think it was Senator Donna Scott who would raise it as to whether the whole issue of unwelcome sexual advances um, being made and the fact that a child would not have the capacity to determine whether something was welcome or unwelcome in relation to a sexual advance. I think mm -hmm. sexual in interference connotes um, something that is 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 is, is much graver, and and it's not the it's it was never the intention to deal with that in this piece of legislation. So I yeah. think I'm just proposing to the committee that maybe we consider using the term sexual advance because it's defined in the law rather than the term sexual interference. Okay, so it would read. And in the last that, paragraph, there's no lacuna in the law as it relates to any sexual advances um, towards children. Interference okay. is a little yes. Better. But uh, then sure, wouldn't you have to change interference all throughout? Yes, change it. Yes, chair. Sorry, I'm sorry. So wherever wherever we refer to sexual interference, chair, I would just propose sexual advances. But yes, because that was the basis. That is that was the basis of which the discussion. Was raised. I think it was by Senator Scott Martin in the first instance. Yes. Well, there was never any mention of interference in the bill no. itself. No, and, the, and and that is a different um that's a totally different, you know, aspect of the bill that we're going down and at which is in in most cases there with under the Sexual Offenses Act. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. We all agree. Agreed, Chair. Agreed. Thank you. Um, Ms. McCarthy, you wanted to say something? 
Yes, Minister, I just wanted to say to the members that there is mention of where it would, the, the, the bill, the proposed recommendations would be regarding children. It's in, in the, not in the introduction. Okay. All right, thank you. So I can proceed. Ms. Grant? Can I just give me a moment, please? I was trying to see, I noticed a comment in the chat about doing the chat changes on the screen. So I was trying to see if it could work. And I touched the button and that oh. is what, that's what's hap happened here. So just to answer Miss Cunningham that it would it would not be convenient in this case because you see what happens, the size drastically, it goes back to the usual size. So it wouldn't be good. So what we'd have to do is just continue noting. I can't do that. Okay. All right. So all right, so you need to. I'm just the same minister that I am making checking the changes. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay, so I could go now to the next paragraph. One, another, yeah. Another area of concern raised in our deliberations was the proposal by several presenters to expand the scope of the bill to include sexual harassment on public roads and in public areas, street harassment in parentheses. Whilst acknowledging the gravity and prevalence of the behavior in the society, we agree that the scheme of the bill is to continue to reflect the policy, which is at this time to legislate for sexual harassment that is employment related, which occurs in institutions or arises in the context of the owning and renting or leasing of accommodations. It is our recommendation that street harassment be considered a criminal offense which should be addressed in another appropriate legislation. Any comments on this paragraph? Yes, here. Just yes. something minor. I was just wondering if instead of using the words owning and renting or leasing of accommodations, that we could simply just talk about the provision of accommodations since the bill doesn't really go into that detail of owning and renting, but it really talks about providing or providing accommodations. So just to keep true to the wording of the bill. Yes. Um, comments? Yes. Yes. Agreed, agreed. Um, agreed, Chen. In addition, it is wider than just, it is intended to be wider than just owning and renting and leasing accommodation that was established during our deliberations. So I, I agree with, with, with the proposal put forward by Mrs. Masado. Right. Thank you. So it would read, um, or arises in the provision of accommod accommodations, how would that read? Um, or arises in the context of the provision of accommodations. Of accommodations. Am I correct? Or arises in the context yes, of the provision of accommodations. Yes. Accommodation chair, take all the S from accommodation. Okay, remove the S. Right. All right, is everything else fine in this paragraph? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Grant, we will now go to findings and recommendations. Your committee, after reviewing the bill extensively, now has the honor of presenting its findings and recommendations. Part one, preliminary. Clause one, short title and commencement. Clause one refers to the short title of the bill entitled 
the Sexual Harassment Act 2020. Your committee does not accept the proposed titles of the sexual harassment, um, parentheses, open employment tools, prevention act, or the prevention of sexual harassment, employment act, posh, but agrees to amend the short title to read the sexual harassment, parentheses, protection and prevention, close parentheses, act. Clause one also refers to the commencement of the bill. Your committee notes the proposals in relation to commencement and agrees that the implementation of the act should be staggered to allow sections or parts of the act to be brought into force at varying times. We also agree to the implementation of part five, which provides for the tribunal before the remainder of the act comes into force. Clause two, interpretation. Clause two, interpretation sets out the definitions that should be generally considered in the context of the substantive provisions in which they are used. Your committee notes the observation that there is no definition of landlord or tenant and the terms lessor and lessee, which are relevant and the proposal for them to be included. Your committee does not accept the proposal to add definitions for the terms landlord, tenant, lessor and lessee, as the term accommodation is defined in a comprehensive manner in the legislation to address the terms landlord and tenant, which were used in the memorandum of objects and reasons. Chair? Yes? I'm sorry, just before you move on. While the decision is correct, that is that I don't think from my notes that is the reason why we decided not to include it. It's the fact that the terms aren't used in the bill. Um, the term landlord and tenant and lesser and lessee, those two, and we can't define terms that I use in the bill. And um, the fact that um, when we speak to accommodation, we are addressing other relationships. Um, it's, a wider, it's a wider scope than just a landlord and tenant and lesser and lesser relationship. So I, 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 don't, I don't think from my notes that um, that was a reason given, it's because of the fact that we don't define terms that are not used in the bill. So the agreement was that we would remove it from the memorandum of objects and reasons, and also because of the fact that the bill is intended to, um, to be, the scope of the bill is, is, is intended to be much wider than just the landlord and tenant relationship. Okay, so um, what would be the changes here then? What would it read? Um, so where we where we where um, we speak to Mrs. Uh, Mrs. C. LeBron, let me just hear from Mrs. Ms. McCarthy. Okay. I'm sorry, it wasn't about this one, Chair. It was about the title and whether or not the members think we should have add the 2021 in the new title. All right. So um members. We just go back to that. To the title, if we should add 2021. That seems to make sense to me, but I don't know what the practice is. I'm in support of it, um, as long as it fits within the practice or the norm. Um, Mrs. Simon, you, you wanted to make a comment on that? 
sorry, my comment was with regards to the um the landlord or tenant issue. I was just I going to say that. Uh, could you hold that I agreed. Can we okay. make a decision on the 2021? Sure. Uh, um, you would have a comment on that? No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Celia Brown? I see no harm in including it, Chair, because um, I see no harm in including it, Chair. Okay, fine. So that's agreed, members? Yes. Okay, agreed, so, Chair. Okay. Agreed, so, Chair. Thank you. Mrs. Simon? Please go ahead. Yes, Chair. I was just um, saying with regards to the landlord and tenant um, section of the, the report that I my memory is the same as Mrs. Brown's in that um, the reason for not agreeing with the suggestion was that the terms were not used. Okay, so therefore, how would we reword, reword this paragraph? Sure. Yes. So we can say um, your committee does not accept the proposal to add definitions um, for the terms landlord, tenant, lesser or lessee, as such terms are not used in the bill. Okay. Oh, All right. So um, your committee does not accept. Your committee does not accept the proposal to add definitions for the terms landlord, tenant, lessor, or lessee as a term is not as such terms as yeah. such terms as such terms term, yes. term is not yes. used and not used yes. as such term terms are terms 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 are not used yes. Yes. in the bill correct sir. okay you have captured that mrs mccarthy yes Minister. all right we also uh, 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 members you're fine i can move on yes sir yes, sure. okay. yes, yes, sir. yes sir we also agree to utilize the term accommodation instead of the terms landlord and tenant in the memorandum of objects and reasons to allow for consistency throughout the legislation. So that's, that's what we were saying earlier. So we keep... <laughs> All right, so I can move on to clause two. Clause two interpretation continued. Your committee notes the proposal to define the term workplace with a suggested definition being, quote, any place where an employee is engaged in work for the employee's employer as defined in the Canadian Labor Code. In our deliberations, we recalled the use of the term work environment, which means one could still be on a social excursion with a coworker and still be exposed to the risk of being sexually harassed. Chair, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, Mrs. Celia Brown. Again, again, that's 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 not uh, what my notes reflect, Chair. And and remember, um, if I am, um, if my memory serves me right, it's for the same reason we didn't define workplace because of the fact that it was not used in the bill, and that was deliberately so because we did not want to have a we did not want to create a workplace of walls. We didn't want to have a defined space especially due to the fact that we know most of us are now working virtually and say so it was intended that the workplace would have been anywhere where and where a worker is conducting um, any functions in relation to his employment. 
but it I think we can just use the same sort of amendment that we use in the in the last paragraph to say that it's not used in the bill. That term isn't used in the bill. And again, you don't define terms that aren't used in, 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 in the legislation in, in the draft bill. In the bill, sorry. Okay, so it would read your committee does not accept the proposed definition of the term workplace. As a uh, yeah, you can so you it can um go, go ahead, go ahead, um George. I don't know if you want to, in light of what Mrs. Celia Brown has said, I don't know if you want to finish reading this this sentence, which may which may come back to what Mrs. Celia Brown is saying, and then we can make the tweaks accordingly. All right, so I would I'm about to make that suggestion, Chair, because if you read the paragraph in its entirety. It does address all the matters raised by Mr. Mr. Silibone, in my view. Yes. All right. So your committee notes, the where are we now? You would start from the view chair. OK, the view was this could arise because the co-workers could be considered to be to still be engaged in a work environment combined with the view that the term workplace would not be confined to walls, but is considered as such once there is a work relationship between the parties. Your committee does not accept including the proposed definition of the term workplace as a term is not used in the bill and therefore does not need to be defined. Your committee notes the proposal to expand the definition of the, no. Okay, so that paragraph can work or are we um, there? Um, forgive me. Um, I, I see the last part and I agree that we have dealt with it there, but I don't know about the words after the word work environment, which means that one could still be on a social exposure with a coworker and still be at a risk of being sexually harassed. I'm not clear that I understand what that what that 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 that, that sentence or that, that part of that sentence is trying to convey. Because in my mind it, it creates a little confusion. Um, maybe it's because I'm not because is it is it that we say that you can be out socially even though it's not related to your work and you may come up on your coworker and if that person harasses you you, you would still have a claim as being sexually harassed in relation to the workplace. I'm not clear as to whether or not those words, um, I'm not clear as to what those words mean. Well, okay. let, let, let me say that, um, Mrs. Seely Brown, through your chair. Yes, go ahead. So that is a possibility yes. Yes. that it can occur. Mm -hmm. But I think we would, have, we would have used that as an example during the deliberations. But the deliberations would have gone past that where we just expanded the scope to say once you're in a working relationship, um, you would have been exposed or you can be exposed to being harassed anywhere in any shape or in any form. I think to you to include this might just give a different interpretation. And that's why we did not define workplace because of the expansive discussion that we would have had. So maybe we need to determine whether or not we want to include this as how it is written. Uh, I am um, Senator Scott Motley, you wanted to make a comment? I had wanted to make a comment earlier, but it's, I, I think Senator Gale really covered my concern because we had an extensive discussion on it. Yes. And he reflects what I was going to say. All right, so what would you, what are you recommending that we do here? Yeah, um, Senator Longmore, you wanted to make a comment? 
No, it's chair. Not at this time. I'm 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 thinking about it myself. Okay. Um, chair, I think yeah. we should go back to Mrs. Celia Brown to ask her. Yes. How she would reframe it. Yes, Mrs. Celia Brown. I I'm not. I'm not sure that I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would prefer to delete those words there. Um, so my sentence would stop at, um, I would use from in, from in our deliberations to sexually harass, that sentence, I would take it out because I think it, it can create some confusion as to um, how wide. I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's a, at the use of, I would just delete that, that sentence, Jay, because I don't really think it adds anything and it's creating some doubt as to, especially with the use of the word social excursion. I'm not sure that we should, I don't know. So, um, so I would so All right, so what sentence are you suggesting we delete? From where you, after you see where after as defined in the labor code, full stop in or from in or deliberations. In and all that, all that. And yeah, well, that's just my view. I, I don't think it adds. Mm -hmm. Ms. Grant? Oh, so that again, Mrs. Seely Brown. I, sorry, yes. Chair. I, I just wanted to hear the last statement that where, where Mrs. Seely Brown would have um, proposed to end. I would just, just for well, the entire sentence, in our deliberations down to the risk of being sexually harassed. Because I think the other sentence um, is clear in my mind as to um, what we discussed and how we arrived at the reason for not including the definition. So it would read, your committee notes a proposal to define the term workplace with a suggested definition being any place where an employee is engaged in work for the employee's employer as defined in the Canadian Labor Code. Yes, and then the viewers, and then the viewers that the, the viewers that this could arise because the code blah, 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 blah. So you'll be, all of that says, you just deleted in our deliberation to recall the use of the term work environment, which means one could still be on a social excursion with a co-worker and still be exposed to the risk of being sexually harassed. Oh. All right, I will take Mr. So that's, uh, Chair, can, can, can I just be clear? That is the only part in the paragraph that she wants deleted. It would continue, it would continue to read that the view was expressed that co-workers could still be considered to be engaged in a work environment. Um, I, I think we need to. I think if we reframe that clause, we would capture what it was that we had discussed. Because when we had discussed that, that we, the walls were we, the walls were no longer blocks, building blocks. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, chair, we I wanted to still. I'm sorry, chair. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wanted to still communicate a sense that it wasn't that it meant that they were in the office. That outside of the if 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 it was on outside of the office, meaning the office building, there could still be considered sexual harassment. If you are so, I think we still have what what we're saying here. If you're you by a co-worker, wherever yes. is that? Where? Yes, Chair, um, Miss Mrs. Brownberg is asking to be let back into the meeting. Um, all right, um, so I don't know any other way to ask. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> Miss McCarthy, you'll take care of that if it has to do with. Um, yes, Miss. Okay. I will take Miss Grant, and and then um, we go back to seeing how we can. Miss Grant, let me hear your your comments in relation to this. Thank you, Chair. I, 
I remember really the the essence of what was be of of what the committee was conveying in relation to the workplace that the workplace need not be brick and mortar and certainly as it is now it has moved beyond the walls. But I do agree with Mrs. Seely Brown though that it's a part about the social expression because how this came up, the point was made, I believe it was raised by Minister Chuck that the relationship exists regardless of where you are, you're still my coworker and so on. But it does create a little confusion. And I think really what what it what we need to keep is that I mean workplace it goes outside of just walls now. But I was also looking at what Mrs. Seely Brown suggested and I would it go even further in the deletions. So I would delete from in our deliberations to over to work environment, because to my mind, the subsequent sentence seems to be a qualifier of the previous sentence. And so that part down to work environment to my mind would need to come out and then we would just keep the section that speaks to that workplace is not confined to walls but so and so so it certainly would need a rephrase yeah i'm chair i would it read but yes go ahead mrs yes yeah, i am agreeing no i think georgia didn't understand what i was saying i would delete the entire thing so it would read chair in my view, your committee notes the proposal to define the term workplace. It is suggested the definition being any place where an employee in is engaged in work for the employee's employer as defined in the Canadian Labour Code. And then it would say the view was expressed that co workers could be considered to be still engaged in a work environment combined with the view that the term workplace will not be confined to walls, but it is considered that once such death, that since once there, well, once there is. A work relationship but as such once there is a work relationship between the parties your committee does not accept including the proposed definition of the term workplace as the term is not used in the bill and therefore does not need to be defined so i'll take out from in our deliberations right down to being sexually crass and then i'll say the view was expressed that co-workers could be considered to be still engaged and it flows the same way chair sure. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I agree, I agree with that approach. I, I will say I will say that I would have been the guilty offender that first raised this matter when I came across a particular case in another jurisdiction where two co-workers had gone overseas on training and one felt that they were be, was being harassed by another and laid a claim to the employer. Yeah. And so the whole question of work relationship without borders or boundaries came into being. And so um, I'm in agreement with what Mrs. Seely Brown would have explained as a possible solution. Okay. All right. So, um, can, I, sir, can I lend my support to that? My, my concern was, I didn't like the term, the social excursion. I think that is what so, so, so like a bus ride, not true? No, yes, it no. sounded like a, a bus ride. But I certainly appreciate the way that Mrs. Seely Brown has edited it, and it's, it reflects my recall of what we, we agreed. OK, Safaya, I'm saying it's a long more. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to throw in there that I think we had also entertained the use of the term workspace instead of workplace, because that would be all encompassing also. Workspace. I recall that that was considered. And it also con captures the virtual workspace. Um, chair, we do the chair. Um, we did have that discussion, but we will need to include it because it's not used in the bill at all. So let's not include or try to incorporate terms um, that um, as as in, the, in this in, in this interpretation provision that is not used in the bill. 
if when we have if when we if in if for any reason when we are redrafting or we decide that we need to change the scheme of the bill, we would want to incorporate a particular term and have it defined so be it. But currently, as the bill stands, there's no need to define workspace or workplace because it's not used in, in, in the legislation at all. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask, um, I don't know if Senator Gailey wanted to say something? No, no, Chair. I, I okay, your hand is up. I oh, sorry. My apologies. I want to remind you to put your video on whenever you intervene. Um, Senator Longmore, your hand is up. Senator Motley, your hand is up. All right, I'd like to ask um, Mrs. McCarthy if you have captured what is being recommended by Mrs. Celia Brown. Yes, Minister, um, if I could just read it. Yes, um, please. I have, the view was expressed that co-workers could be considered to still be engaged in a work environment combined with the view that the term workplace would not be confined to walls, but is considered as such once there's a work relationship between the parties. Are we fine with that, members? Could, could I just hear it again, Chair, please? The view was expressed that co-workers could be considered to still be in, engaged in a work environment combined with the view that the workplace would not be confined to walls, but is considered as such once there is a work relationship between the parties. I'm good with it. Agreed, Chair. And of course, and of Agreed. course, and of course, Chair, we, we believe what is what, what follows after, right? Your committee yes. does not accept yes. that main chair. Right, Ms. McCarthy? Yes, Mrs. Brown. Okay. Good, good. And your committee notes the proposal to expand the definition of the term institution by adding private sector businesses. Your committee does not accept the proposal to add private sector businesses to the definition of the term institution. We're fine with that. Your committee notes the proposal to add the word, no. Uh, Sorry, Chair, I went back because you were asking if, if the committee was fine with it. So I went back to put it on the screen. Well, I, no one has said anything. So um, we go on to your committee notes the proposal to add the word written to the definition for the term sexual advance to capture any perpetrator who may choose to harass an individual through letters or any other form of written communication. Your committee does not accept the proposal to add the word written to the definition of the term sexual advance as it is already provided for at clause two, two. We also note the proposal to amend the definition of sexual advance taking into consideration the physical contact of a sexual nature which can be taken as a criminal offense rather than sexual harassment. We do not accept the proposal to delete subparagraph A in the definition of sexual advance and agree the definition should remain as is. Members, um, I see Mrs. Simon and? I just wanted to double check, was this the paragraph to my recollection, this was the, the paragraph that um, was going to be reworded by Mrs. Brown to, to change the language, to make it a little, to use that kind of broader definition that was in other jurisdictions. No, Chair, no, no. I, if, if, if I may, Chair, this, Ms. Simon, this, it was suggested at one point in time in the discussion that we could let it flow in one, as in other jurisdictions, as a part, whereas we have it in a disjunctive way. 
but yeah. it, it was later agreed in subsequent discussions that it should remain as is and okay. including that the physical should remain okay okay thank you okay so we go to um senator gale senator gale yes chair right i'm going to ask you if you could just take over for for um a few minutes to sure chair right to go through the report while i just um ask ask to be um excused for a few minutes sure chair Ms. Grant, you want to proceed? No, Chair. I'll leave that to you, Chair. I just put it up on the screen there, Chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we are at... Still in... So, so this is where you would begin from. Well, you'd continue from, I should to say. To delete the words unreasonable from Clause 1B1 of the definition of the term sexual harassment, the definition which reads interfering unreasonably with the work performance of the person to whom the sexual advance is made, as it could give rise to, the, to a defense if the interference were unreasonable. Any comment? Your committee. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Is there a definition um, in the first sentence um there twice needed the word definition is, is there twice is it is it needed to delete the word unreasonable from the clause so 1d1 of the definition of the term sexual harassment definition which reads delete the words unreasonable could the second oh, definition be if we, need the word, if we need the word definition to be right, after <laughs> after the sexual harassment there it's there twice it's there twice so could be with um delete the second one the you saw that miss grant yes chair so we need it we don't need it twice i think one can be taken out chair the second one the second one, okay. Yes. Chair. Chair. Yes. Chair. Um, yes, Mr. Seeley Brown. First of all, it, it should read from paragraph B1 of the definition, not clause, but from paragraph B1. That's the first, my, the first, um, the first correction. The other thing is chair. Yes. I don't know why I have it in my notes that we were also deleting reasonably the term reasonably from paragraph A. Am I correct? I thought so, you know, there was a long discussion around unreasonably, and then somewhere along the line, we had thought about our there. contemplated discussing. It's I mean, included there. The it's included. The last sentence. It's there. Oh, yeah. it's there. Yeah. It's there. Okay, okay, but can we put that before, Chair? Can we deal with it in, in sequence? So let's deal with paragraph A first. So, Miss McCarthy, if you can just shift it around. So yes, clear. Yeah. Because that would be A and then B. Yes. And then B. Sorry, oh, okay. yes. Yeah. So, so the next, your committee accepts the proposal and agrees to delete the word unreasonable from the definition of sexual harassment as it was too subjective. We also agree to delete the word reasonable. So we switch it around. Correction. Right. Chair, I'm wondering though if if it would be as it was too subjective or as it is too subjective. I or believe as it as is it, thought to be too subject or something instead of was. I believe is. Is thought to be. So that would be Senator Scott Matley expressing a view. Okay. 
I start to be too subjective. Yes, Chair. All right. Can proceed now. So, sorry, sorry, Chairman. Sorry to to um. Yes, to cause a, yes. I had no. I had a, a an important phone call came in that I had to take just now. What was the the final decision regarding the unreasonable? I'm I'm sorry. Sorry to revert, but I had to take that phone call. Miss Grant, can you just read our where we were? Chair. So Senator Longmore, what was decided is that we're going to just shuffle how this is worded. So it would read to delete the uh, it would read to delete the word reasonably from paragraph A of the mm -hmm. did you say definition Reason. of sexual? Harassment, Mrs. Celia Brown. What was the, the word you said again? No, it it should not. Um, it should be paragraph B one of the definition, and not clause one. B1. And not clause one. B1. Right. So mm -hmm. it would be. So I agree. Delete the word reasonable from paragraph A of the definition of sexual harassment due to the subjective nature of the word, mm -hmm. and then we would say to delete the word reasonably from paragraph B one mm -hmm. of the definition of sexual harassment which reads right. interfering unreasonably with so and so and then it would be our committee accepts the proposal and agrees to delete the word unreasonably from the definition of sexual harassment as it is thought to be too subjective okay all right great thank all you right. thank you so thank you can... for allowing that chair all right so we proceed two to expand the term hostile work environment to include institutional settings as currently only work environments are addressed. Your committee does not accept the proposal and agrees. Uh, it I'm, should I'm, remain. Sorry, I'm sorry, um, are we skipping? Are we? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I lost my last four minutes. Okay. I'm very sorry. Go right ahead. You're, you're back with us now. Um, yes, I am. Member Brownberg. Yes, sorry. I am. All right, so I'll repeat, to expand the term hostile work environment to include institutional settings as currently only work environments are addressed. Your committee does not accept the proposal and, at agree, and agrees it should remain as is. Three, to amend the definition of the term sexual harassment by removing the word unwelcome to address circumstances where a person lacks the capacity to legally give consent to sexual activity. Your committee does not accept the proposal, but re recommends that a review be made of relevant legislation to ensure that there is no lacuna in the law as it relates to the issue of sexual advance directed at a child who cannot legally consent to sex. Chair? Yes. Can we just part of us who cannot legally consent to sex? And um, because I take that this week that goes off again into an area that I don't think we need to, it's covered in this legislation and put a full stop at the end of a at a child. Of a child. Yeah, and because right. we already remember we had raised the concerns earlier that was um because this is still coming out of the same issue that was raised by Senator um Scott Motley and we were re reiterating what was um said in the introduction. As a matter of fact, chair, as a matter of fact, chair, I would have preferred if that part of the discussion that dealt with um, the concerns that were raised um, in the introduction, in the overview that we fixed, could have been placed there. But that's just my view to, you know, clearly um, state the rationale for doing this. But I mean, it's there, and I would just think it would have been tidy to have it here. And then we will need to have you know, all of it, have the yeah. same thing in one place. Yes, yes, yes. And, and have it here. Yeah, but I mean, that's not, you know, I mean, that's just, that's just my vision. Committee members, would it do any harm? I think it reiterates a very critical point that we want to make. 
I, I would have no difficulty with it being um, kept together. Right. Um, yeah. But just to confirm that in, in, in for this particular sentence, we end at the word at, a, at the word child. Yes, 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 sure. I think so. Okay. Yes. Can I can Agreed. I just ask um just for clarity? Um so sure. I'm clear in my mind. I know we had an extensive discussion around it. So I'm very clear that this bill is not aimed at, at addressing the issues related to under 16. But because here it had raised that issue about legal consent, um, does this bill, as con as um, worded, constructed, deals with those individuals who might be impaired and unable to give consent, who are not children? Ms. Grant, Mrs. Celia Brown. Let's say there's someone with some kind of intellectual um, impairment or um, disability that prevents them from being able to give consent. My recall of that um, is that it, it is dealt with elsewhere where the definition of child includes the mental capacity of a person. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks for that. Um, okay, so we can move on there. To, sure. four. to expand and amend the definition of the term sexual harassment as a sexually based okay. violation. Chair, I'm sorry, I don't mean to belabor the point. I just wanted to be clear as to what the committee has decided to do. Are we keeping everything together or we are allowing it to be to remain as as we have it. So one section is addressed, one part is addressed in one section, and then we come up on this. Or are we lumping them together? I thought we had agreed, or it was my understanding that we would put them together. Okay, chair. Excuse me, chair. Yes, Miss Ma. Uh, so in this case, since I removed that section from the beginning to here, the decision at the end would speak to. Uh, it would say the, your committee does not accept the proposal but recommends that a review be made to the relevant office. Yes. I just wanted to check. It's okay. So do I say okay. children, sexual advances towards children or a child? Because the first one I said towards children. So I believe we have to be consistent. Yes. All right. We can move on now to expand and amend the definition of the sex of the term sexual harassment as a sexually based violation of a person's human rights, including in a context of unequal power or gender relations. It may be one unwelcome sexually determined behavior as a physical contact or advance, sexually colored remarks showing pornography, and sexual demand, whether by words or actions directed or implied. What's the? Are a series of persistent. Over a series of persistent or pervasive pervasive change. occurrence or a single serious incident by another person or persons. Two, unwelcome sexually determined behavior in charge, in sorry, in exchange for a benefit or to prevent a detriment, and or three, a sexually hostile envir environmental condition made up of persistent, pervasive conduct or a single serious incident. Wait, Ms. Grand Gray, move it away. I just made it, I made a point bigger chair, that's why I'm sorry. Oh, you thought I was having difficulties. <laughs> I thought so chair, so I made it a little bigger. You make it bigger, no, me can't see it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm just trying to catch back where I was. 
Okay, so you would you would start again, Chair, from such conduct. Such conduct may be degrading and may constitute a health and safety problem. Your committee does not accept the proposal to expand and amend the definition of the term sexual harassment in the manner proposed. Five, to expand the definition of sexual harassment to include other unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature and thereafter remove the definition of sexual advance, which was viewed as containing a restrictive list of five forms of sexual advance. The view expressed was that it would then be left to, to the tribunal and the courts to interpret and apply the legislation to real life experiences, which will have the effect of not closing the categories of what constitutes sexual harassment, whilst at the same time, ensuring that the evolution does not open the floodgates whereby anything that is raised is giving the blessing of the law. Your committee does not accept the proposal to expand and amend the definition of the term sexual harassment in the manner proposed. Chair, if I may hear, just yes. so that we remain true to the wording of the of the bill, that the and the court, I'm suggesting chair would need to be removed, given that it would be the tribunal and that is empowered to deal with any complaints of sexual harassment and the courts would only be dealing with penalties or breaches there, there, there by. So, so in this context, we would remo we'll remove the courts? Yes, Chair. Committee? I think that is clearly understood. Yes, Chair. Next. To amend the definition of the term sexual harassment to ensure that the various elements of the definition be linked to change the disjunctive term or to and, your committee does not accept the proposal to make all elements of the definition of sexual harassment inextricably linked and instead agrees that it should remain disjunctive. With the exception of I above, your committee agrees the definition of sexual harassment should remain as is. That's it. So that would deal with that entire um, sequence. Can I move on? Your Just for clarity, they, yeah. yes, Senator one, Scott Martin. You said with the exception of was it with the exception of one, one above. One, one above, sorry. My apologies. Well, Your okay, committee okay, agrees sorry, that the definition sorry, of okay. sexual harassment yes, should remain. I agree is. with it. I agree right. with it. It has to be this. Sorry, you broke up a while ago, Senator Scott Motley. You want to repeat? Sorry, Chair. I was saying that it has to be disjunctive because to do otherwise would make the, the test too high. Too many things would have to be met. Right. So we'll, I'm, we'll, it has we'll, to be we'll disjunctive. The standards to levels that might be challenging. So. Yes, yes, that is my view. Right. Your committee notes the proposal that all references to the terms reasonable or reasonableness in the sexual harassment bill be removed due to the subjunctive nature. Your committee does not accept the proposal to delete the word reasonable or reasonableness and agree such references throughout the act should remain as is. Chair, is that correct? That's what I'm thinking. Sure that I'm a little bit lost there. Yeah. I, that's what I'm thinking. Given the given the dis deliberations around that. 
because I recall us. I recall the discussions around. And it's Miss Miss Mac, you wanna can you check how we would have arrived here? Um sorry, Chair, I was trying to address something else. Um could you just remind me of who we're speaking? You're right. So we, we're we're at the your committee notes the proposal that all references to the terms reasonable or reasonableness in the sexual harassment bill will be removed due to its subjective nature. Your committee does not accept the proposal to delete the word reasonable or reasonableness and agree such references throughout the act should remain as is. Um, I recall it was just to that I made Except. And there is a section that speaks to the minister being reasonable. And I remember the SG at the time speaking about Wensbury, Wensbury's rules. So I'm not sure um, why the committee, because, because we had addressed the unreasonable in the definition of sexual harassment. So I'm not sure if Ms. Ms. Grant can help. But I know we had deleted unreasonable in the definition and unreasonable, yes, in the first part of the, the section that we just read. Any comments? Any other view? Any reminder? Uh, sorry, Chair. Um, I think this was with regards to a particular clause. Um, it's drafted in general terms. I don't. And um, in light of the the changes made to sexual, the definition for sexual harassment, we would have to re-examine this paragraph. And I believe this is where this was what would have triggered those discussions at length. Here, I have a suggestion. Maybe we could just say, we'll keep what is there and just add something like, except in specific instances as outlined in this report, because I'm sure the bill will say reasonable and have those words where we're not aware right now that we would not be agreeing to delete. So just um, since this is a general proposal, we could just. So where do you propose to add those words now? So the sentence says, your committee does not accept the proposal to delete the word reasonable or reasonableness and agrees that such references throughout the act should remain as is, mm -hmm. except in specific instances as outlined in this report. Because the report would have said higher that we would have deleted reasonable or unreasonable, as the case may be. So just to keep what remain to keep what is there and just accept in specific instances as outlined in this report. In this report. Okay. Just for accuracy for that statement. Okay. All right. Committee members. In agreement with that approach. Cameron, I am um, good morning and sorry for my lateness. Um, I had another engagement, but I'm I'm fine with that that approach. I just am trying to recall where else in the bill it references that term. But um out of an abundance of caution, I will I, I I'm in agreement, Chairman. Thank thank you, Senator Fraser Dennis. And welcome. Uh, I'm in agreement as well. Um, I'm in agreement as well. Thank you, MP Brownberg. All right. Your committee deliberated on the inclusion of a definition for the term harasser in clause two and include third parties in keeping with the United States of America Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EOC in brackets, which states the harasser can be the victim's supervisor, a supervisor in another area a coworker or someone who is not an employee of the employer, such as a client or customer, end quote. Your committee does not accept the proposal to define the term harasser as it is not used in the legislation. However, we agree to expand the scope of part three, specifically clause seven, 
to provide protection to workers from third parties, which includes clients, customers, subcontractor, service provider, etc. We also agree to include provisions, provision to address the worker sexually harassing third parties. We agree further that as part of the process for redress, a guide or a code of practice for responses to third parties is to be developed. I want to stop there. This is the first thing that we would have in red. Um, Ms. Mack? Any reason why you have this in red? Um, because there is a question as to, based on, I'm not sure if Ms. Ms. Um, Grant could go to the side um, that says that it needs clarity in terms of code um, and whether the code would need to address other issues. It was just a concern mm -hmm. um, and that it needs further clarity is the code to be included in the bill. And I remember it, the committee having agreed early that it would be in the schedule, it would be a schedule. And would it would it address other areas? So I just, so, I had a concern and I put it in red. Um, so, so my recollection is that the committee had agreed that there should be the establishment of a code, code yes. to complement or supplement the bill. What I believe, and maybe I need um, a reminder on this, if whether or not we had agreed that the code would come in the schedule or the code would come thereafter as a complement of the bill. Any comments, any yes. recollection? Yes. yes. My, I, I know, no, um, oh, sorry, Mrs. Seeley Brown. My notes are a little different with respect to this. I, yeah, I have a note at clause four where we are more speaking of the issue of policy statements and all of that mm -hmm. to provide for a code of um of practice and, and or, or a well not a code of practice but to ensure that the, the policy statement that is currently with the ministry that policy that they have developed to be part of the schedule of the bill. I I don't have it as linking it to the whole issue with third parties. But to be much broader as to what should be incorporated in this sexual harassment policy statement that employers are mandated to um to issue in relation to clause four. So I have it as a wider. I can't. I, I don't have it as related to third parties and its inclusion as is stated here. Thank you, Mrs. Seeley Brown. Ms. Grant. Yes, Chair. I I too have that note. On the, on the bit about reminding you about the code and the schedule, what I do have in my notes that we would put in the schedule, apart from the complaint form, we would place a policy guideline template, which would differ from the code of practice. So um, I'm not sure, Chair. Uh, so the code of practice in my mind is separate from treating with these things. And maybe and would include um, things that would support the legislation that is not contained in the legislation as it is now, in terms of a guide. I'm just trying to connect how we, at, we, we treat with it here in dealing with third parties and the likes. Yeah. Yes. I'm thinking that, um, well, based on what I have written, because we had agreed to include third parties as, as, right. as individuals who may be harassed or may be sexually harassed, I, this, the policy statement should have had the mechanism for a person who, um, who is harassed or sexually harassed. Um, whether it's a third party or an individual who is sexually harassed by a third party, for the policy statement to cover issues related to third parties since you are expanding the scope of the bill beyond the workplace and institutions and accommodation. 
That is that is how I had it written down. It is not that there should be a specific code for the party to be developed, but that in your policy statement that you are mandated to prepare on the clause four, it must include how third parties will be dealt with. That's 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 what my notes are here. Okay. Um, so how would we read this now? Well, I don't know, but Chair, I don't know, Chair, if that was, if my, my, my notes were correct. Um, I'm not sure, because this is, this is saying something quite different to what I have in my notes. I don't know if members of the committee could recall their discussion in relation to this issue. I find we have missed the discussion in relation to that issue, Chair. Ms. Grant, can you just flip back for me, please? Just to add, Chair, that yes. my recollection, my recollection is that the code of practice was to be a general code dealing with a range of issues and not specific to third party. Right, um, that was my thinking. My thinking is the code would be some sort of a guide as to how the process would be treated, what procedures would entail, how an employer would apply such procedure, and how the workers would apply or operate. But Chair, Chair, yeah. forgive me, but I'm, I'm still not understanding the whole process of the code of practice because we have provided for that in clause four. So I'm not understanding this new code of practice or guide when we have provided for it in clause four. If you look at the things that must be um, incorporated into the into the, 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 the policy statement from sub clause three of clause four. I mean, what, 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 what will be different about the code of practice? That's because you, you, you'd be including in the schedule, remind us what we'd be including in, in the schedule now. The complaint uh, form. The oath, complaint form, and the policy guideline template. And the policy guideline template. And the policy guideline template would inform an employer how to um, deal with the proceedings. How to how they how they go about crafting their policy, their the sexual harassment policy that's to be put up in their workplaces slash institutions. So it would serve as a guide as to how they would craft it. Mm -hmm. Chair, Senator I Scott Martley. Yes, Senator yes. Scott Martley. I um Chair, I believe that when we were discussing this issue, it was really within the context of a policy statement. And that is how we determined that we should have a sort of guide. Mm -hmm. I think the person who can probably, if she's on this call, uh, Ms. Coburn, Ms. Mrs. Coburn would probably be able to reflect it. Because in our discussions, we were thinking that the policy statement would be able to address, it would drill down uh, with a number of the clauses which we're considering. And I think that this um, thought here as to third parties, it could be appropriately addressed in the policy statement. Because I think we have reference to, to it also. Um, I think we so when we discussed it, we felt that in seven, we could also deal with it. That was my recall.
Any other comments? Chairman, I, I do recall that um, at least my understanding of it was that it should be include, included, the issue of the third party should be included in the code of practice, which is a general document. If I recall correct, um, correctly, there was a discussion about how do you treat with customers or service providers who are not necessarily workers, but they come on to offer service. And I do recall, I think it was Senator Johnson Smith who um, spoke about, used the example of the hotel worker and, and a guest who harasses that person, how it is treated. And it is out of that discussion, a very extensive discussion, that I believe the decision was made that in the code of practice, there will be something specific that speaks to third party and how we're treat how third parties are treated with. I did not get the impression that the intent was to include the code of practice as part of the bill through the schedule, but that it would be a standalone document which is developed at some other time, um, but complements the, the bill and it would speak among other things specific to how third parties are treated. That's my recollection. Chair, I just want to ask one question of Senator Fraser Bins. That is to say, was it supposed to be a separate document apart from the policy statement, or was it to be included in the policy statement? Again, my understanding, and I'm not sure what Ms. McCarthy has in terms of the notes, but my understanding that it was a separate document. Okay, thank you. I will be guided by Ms. McCarthy when she reviews her notes, though, but that's my understanding. Chairman, you have not missed a meeting, so perhaps you can help us no, out. I, I, you see, my, 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 my thinking on the process would have been around the code being some sort of a guideline that is separate and apart from the legislation itself. Indeed. So it would have some procedures around how you conduct investigations on the matter, how you and I'm looking at the workplace scenario now. Yes, how reports so, are made. So, so how reports are made, how you you have a, a hearing on the matter, some sort of an of a guide yes. to employers. That's my understanding. To yes. In treating with it. Um, and that would be separate and apart from what would have been contained in the legislation and or the schedule. My understand, that's my understanding as well, Chairman. But I, I would love to have heard from Mrs. Robb on this. Um, Chair, I have been in and out of the meeting because I've been having severe internet challenges. So I'm not exactly sure where we are now in terms of what you're asking me. So oh. I remember hearing um, Senator Motley, Scott Motley asking about the, the schedule. But since I dropped out and came back in twice, I've been having real issues with my internet. Can you just remind me of this specific question so I can respond? So we are at, we are at this part of the report that speaks to your committee deliberated on the inclusion of the term harasser in clause two <clears throat> and included third parties in keeping with the United States of America Equal Opportunity, Opportunity, Opportunity Commission, which states that the harasser can be the victim's supervisor, a supervisor in another area, a coworker or someone who is not an employee of the employee, such as a client or customer. Your committee does not accept the proposal to define the term harasser as it is not used in the legislation. However, we agree to expand the scope of part three, specifically clause seven to provide protection to workers from third parties, which means clients, customer, subcontractor, service provider, etc. We also agree to include provisions to address the workers sexually harassing third parties. We proceed along. Go ahead, Ms. Grant. Ms. Grant? Yes, Chair. Go from, go to the next page. The, the page that now has um, the third, the, the code of, all right. We agree further 
that as part of the process for redress, a guide or a code of practice for responses to third parties is to be developed. So the issue is around what constitutes this code of practice. And if the, third, if the code of practice is only specifically dealing with third parties, which I don't believe, that was the understanding. But to get from you, Ms. Rob, what could con be contained in this code of practice? Thank you, Chair. So I think I recall when we were having this conversation that we could refer to the anti-sexual harassment policy, which has a guide in terms of how we could craft their own, that's workplaces, could craft their own workplace policies. Mm -hmm. And it would also allow for, if, if we need to, which I'm seeing here in the request for a code of practice, that could also guide how it is that we craft a code of practice. So I think I remember saying that and Mrs. Seely Brown saying we could include that in the schedule. So I had subsequently sent that sexual harassment policy. Yes, I remember policy. that extensive policy. Right. And so we, we thought that is something we could look at because some of the workplaces that have had their harassment, sexual harassment policy developed, for example, UDC. Mm -hmm. I remember I know that I know that one. That's a very extensive right. one. That's right. And so their their members, their their team members come sometimes under significant harassment from persons who are not staff members. And so the protection yes. had to be extended to include them. So that's my recollection of it in terms of the policy. I am not certain if there's something else that we could include that will allow for the code of practice to be developed if we needed to do research and so on. But that was my recollection of it. Right. Agreed. Chair, if I might. Yes. yes. This is Ms. Um, in this whole discussion about the code of practice, the bill currently doesn't provide for it. So if we want to have, if we want there to be the possibility of there being a code of practice, we'd have to include that provision in the bill. The bill currently just speaks about um, regulations. But also beyond that, who would be the one appointed in the bill to develop the code of practice. And uh, I mean, we'd have to really give it some more thoughts. And if, because if, if we don't provide for it in the bill and, and then these code of practices are developed, then how would it be enforced if there's a breach of it? So those kind of issues um, need some clarity on that. All right, so. This is a piece of legislation that is, in my mind, expected and anticipated to ensure some type of behavior. And you have workplaces now that have, that would have developed policies around sexual harassment. Are we saying that if we are venturing in ensuring that this bill becomes a legislation that is effective, it would require some sort of guidance for employers. Your question is, who would be responsible to develop in such guidance? And in a case like this, I, I go back to the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act, which has, is an expansive workplace work, labor piece of legislation that is supported by the Labor Relations Code. And the Labor Relations Code gives some sort of a guidance that complements the Labor Relations and Industrial Disputes Act. And I'm thinking if this piece of legislation is one that suggests 
an application of certain procedures, then there ought to be some sort of a guide in terms of how those procedures can work. That was my thinking. What we ought now to determine is how can we fit this, if agreed, if understood, into the legislation. Any comments? Chair, I wondered whether or not other pieces of legislation in other countries, regionally and so on, have had this code of practice included and how it is that they had developed it and what was the body that was responsible for creating it? That's something I could ask? Yes. Chair, I'm guided by the legal minds on this one. I'm not able to address that now, I'm not sure. No, and I, I never, I, I wouldn't think of us addressing it now. Um, Chair. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I've listened to you about the code of practice uh, working in tandem with the the, the, the labor code rather working in tandem with the labor legislation. And I am thinking that the, the similar document in our context would be the policy. I am wondering, I know the policy, the policy is due for review. Yes, Mrs. Robinson? And I, and I believe so, but even so, so. So no, it wouldn't be reviewed because what happened is it was never accepted as a policy in its entirety, okay. but it was from the green paper that crafted for crafting this legislation. So that's as far as it ended. So I don't know that um, we require an, a review of it because based on what was said, we would no longer need it as a separate document since it's going to be informing this legislation but it could be used as a part of the guidance note. Right, and this is the policy that has been assisting institutions to come up with their own workplace policies. Using, yes, this is what we've been using. Right, and so I'm wondering, Chair, that... that a tweak of the policy would really be what is required to take into consideration the procedures and whatever else that the committee would wish so that it could be, uh, I don't want to say comprehensive, but it, it could give much guidance for want of a better phraseology to employers, heads of institutions, and how they go about treating with certain matters under the legislation. So how do we um, how do we propose to insert the use of that as it relates to the legislation now? Do we make reference to it anywhere? To what? So if, if we're going to use the policy that as a guide, do we make reference to it in the legislation? Or do we make reference to it only in the report? I'm not sure I'm clear on what is being asked. Guidance for the code? So we would have spoken about the code of practice. And we see, we view the code of practice as giving some guidelines as to how the legislation would work. 
And so what Miss Grant would have indicated a while ago, Miss Grant, if you want to just repeat for reference. I was just saying, Carissa, that day, that we could use the policy, the same policy that has been informing other workplace policies, that we could use the, the policy and uh, to make insertions as are necessary into that policy, which would function then as this code of practice. But then what Senator is asking is, would we then make reference to it in the legislation or would it just be referenced in the report? In the report. Uh, Chair? Yeah? Oh, all right. Did Ms. Simon from LRD. Yes, um, Ms. I Simon. would just say that um, I think Mrs. Brown had mentioned it would, could, would be linked to class four because class four uh, um, speaks to the policy state is it class four that speaks it, it, to it, yeah. it speaks the to policy, policy statement. statement right so you could make the link to the schedule there as far as i can think um and from i also wanted to add that in my research in looking at various legislation i have not seen a code of practice in any of them though okay i would have to do some more digging but i have not seen one i think i recall seeing a policy in the schedule of one of them, but I can't remember which. I would suggest maybe clause four and for institutions, clause five, that the, the link could make, be made to the appropriate schedule there, um, but I would take guidance from Mrs. Brown on that. Cecilia Brown, any comment? No, Chair, I mean, it's just to reiterate what I had said earlier, that I think that the policy statement would cover what is anticipated here that we call in a code of practice. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is necessary for us to make specific reference to it in the legislation in, in this manner. Chair? Yes, Mrs. Senator Scott. May I proffer an opinion? Yes. I believe that we should reference the code of practice in the report, mm -hmm. indicating that we would like to see a code of practice developed. I believe that the, the recommendation that Ms. Grant has made in terms of Inter introducing it into other codes of an existing code of practice is something that we could recommend in the report as in well. In the report, okay. Yes, in our so so that we don't we are not treating with it as um, as something that should come in this in a schedule to to this report or anything like that. Or but say that we, to the we, we feel there's a need for a code of practice, and we recommend that. Pardon me? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't hear that, Chair. No, I'm saying go ahead. No, I, I'm saying that, yes, and I'm saying also that it could we could also go a little further to say that we are recommending that it be inserted in some way in, in an existing code of practice. That's how I think that, that's how, how I think it could be resolved. Because I don't think it's appropriate for us to craft a code of practice only for the third parties. And nor do I think that we should seek to address it in a schedule. Agreed. Any other comments on that? That could be a possible yeah. approach. Sir, may I just yes. ask me to default, we, you settle on this the whole code of practice idea. To just read sub clause three of clause three again, and 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 determine if you have these provisions. Remember, it was not have provided for third parties because third parties were not included initially. So paragraph three B will have to be expanded to be with third parties. Why, if we have these provisions, would we need a specific code of practice for third parties? Because it will obviously have to be included in our statement to the effect that where we speak in 3B, 
of the statement that persons are entitled to an environment that will have to be expanded because we are now including third parties. And when you read the, the, the essence of sub, sub, of sub clause three, I, I, I don't think there is need for any code of practice to deal with third parties, Chair, if they're included in, 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 in sub clause 3B. Um, Mr. Seely Brown, read sub clause 3B so all of us can hear it at the same time. I'll do more than that sentence, but Matthew, I will read paragraph. I'll read from paragraph 3A, because it goes back to 4A that speaks to the employer taking steps to ensure that he issues a policy statement in writing concerning the prevention of sexual harassment in the business or undertaking or the protection of workers in the business or undertaking from sexual harassment, right? And he must issue the policy statement and take reasonable steps to ensure that it is brought to the attention of everyone. So that is sub, that is four one. When you look at sub clause three, it says a policy statement shall provide for the following: a definition and a statement to the effect that workers or, as it currently is drafted, students, residents, ward inmates, patients, or members, as as the case may be, are at or at, the, at or of the institution entitled to an environment that is free of sexual harassment. Here we will now have to include the third parties because we're including them as a group. And it goes on then to speak of how discipline measures are to be taken, what are the internal mechanisms that are supposed to be available, um, the, 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 the fact that he shouldn't disclose information and, and, and goes on for it to speak to how the mechanisms must be used and that they must be exhausted. So I'm saying in putting this policy or issuing this policy statement in your institution, workplace, wherever, I'm not understanding then the need for an additional code of practice to deal with third parties when this will have this policy statement would have to include all of the mechanisms that are necessary to prevent sexual harassment and protect persons who are sexually harassed pursuant to the provisions of this legislation. So you're saying the policy statement would deal with that? I, that's what I'm thinking, Chair. Chair, if I may. Yes, Ms. Grant. I am looking at it. I'm looking at this section that Mrs. Seeley Brown mentioned. And I can see the reasoning in that regard. I can see it. And even going back to Chair, what you were talking about, the procedures to be used in treated with so on, and I guess that would include grievance procedures and so forth, that three, that is so clause three paragraph D, D would take care of that. The internal mechanisms and procedures that are available and so for the making of complaint resolution and settlement of the complaints and all of that. So I I I think that if we're looking in the at the, the code of practice that we have the an inbuilt then code of practice in the code of practice used loosely in the in the bill already in the form of the policy statement so all we would need all we would be doing now would be creating in sub clause 3b roman numeral 3 to now include third parties or they could go in two two but i think we would put them in another one since we are we did agree in previous meetings that we would create a standalone. It was a standalone. Right. So I just we would don't recall where we are determined to place them. That's true, Chair. Neither do I at this moment. But that they would be included and all, all the subsequent paragraphs would then relate to them. So I, I should think that that should take care of, of the concerns of the committee. Committee members, thanks, Ms. Grant. Thanks, Mrs. Seeley Brown. Any other comment? Well, Chair, that my view was that at, from the outset that it could be dealt with in the policy statement, but right. I appreciate the explanation which has been given. Because I think it's important that all of us hear how it is being contemplated that it be dealt with. And, and, and that is where we, you know, we wanted the clarity. Certainly in my mind, 
where and how it would be dealt with. And, and I go back to Mrs. Robinson pointing out that, that policy at the UDC that I would have seen would, would uh, it's very expansive. It, it's of a clearly defined nature and gives good guidance. All right, so the wording of the report now. So can we, can we deal with it from here? Agree further that as, as part of the process for redress? Would it be that we insert our comments here? Should we just delete the last sentence? Or a code, the last one that speaks of, or a code of practice for responses to third parties is to be developed. Because sure. it's not so. Sorry. Yeah. I, think yes. entire, I think the entire paragraph can be deleted. Starting from. We agree to develop. Sorry. Because it is it will be dealt with in the policy statement once it's in, once we decide. Because remember, it, it, it's a consequential amendment to insert in third parties into the legislation. So once we insert third parties into the legislature, we just can't insert them. We have to do more to ensure that they're given the same sort of protection that a worker, a student, a person who is seeking accommodation and all those, those different categories are, are protected. So those will be, that will be consequent, those will be consequential amendments that will appear in the list of amendments to the draft bills. I don't think there's any need to specifically speak of a code of practice to respond to any party, more even so third parties individually. Agreed on that. So where we start. So, so the proposal on. is sure that we delete that last sentence and that would cover the situation. Flip to the next page, Miss Grant. That last, the last sentence that speaks to. We further That's agree. We agree, yes. We agree further that as part of the process for just a guide or a code of practice for responses to third parties to build up. Strike that out. Yes, Chair. All right, so we can proceed now. Clause two interpretation continued. Your committee notes that the proposal to include a specific definition for the term online sexual harassment that complements provisions in the Cybercrimes Act and to identify the use of technology as a medium for sending or requesting pornographic and other such materials. Your committee does not accept including a proposed definition for the term online sexual harassment as the language in the act is wide enough to cover the commission of sexual harassment in various forms, online or otherwise. Next. In relation to the definition of sexual harassment, we note the proposal for the adoption of a similar provision to clause three, two of the Barbados Employment Sexual Harassment Prevention Act 2017, which states that, in quote, nothing included in the definition of sexual harassment could be interpreted as precluding a finding of same when there's a single incident, end of quote. Your committee does not accept the proposal as there is no provision in the act that stipulates a series of such incidents versus a single incident. Your committee notes the proposal for a de definition of the term person in charge recognizing that the terminology is commonly used, but that the person in charge, but may refer to another employee and not necessarily the employer. In educational institution, views are expressed that the term could refer to the chairman of the board or a principal. That is whether it refers to the person who has 
the power to approve institutional policies and take disciplinary action or otherwise. Your committee does not accept the proposed definition for person in charge and agree that it should be left to the ordinary interpretation of the term. All right, why is that in red? In red chair, I believe because Mrs. Matt doesn't have any decision for that. So, so yes, chair. Um, and we would have deliberated that and come to that con come to the conclusion that was contained. Yes, sir. That's what I have. I'm just that I don't have it being a definitive decision. I know the AG's office had um, a view, I reviewed it and found nothing in the legislation to address the matter. So I'm not sure that there was a decision from that. And case. maybe that's why. That's why the, the proposal for it to agree for it to be left to the ordinary interpretation was inserted. Technical team. Yes. Can we go with it as is and just agree? Mrs. Masado. Yes, Chair. I was saying that. Sorry, you broke up. I think that. Uh, Chair, I'm not sure what's happening with Mrs. Misado's. Uh, oh, she she sent something in there. Um, oh, okay. The statement can remain as is. As is, okay. Chair, just uh, to say though that yes. we remaining as is that uh, going back to the previous page that the second but after the person in charge would need to be taken out. <laughs> The second but. Yes, Chair. So, recognizing that the terminology is commonly used, but that the person in charge, but may refer. Oh, yeah, but may, right, right. Yeah. Agree. All right. We also note the proposal to expand the definition of the term worker to include a person conducting a business or undertaking to also include corporate entities, companies, partnerships, and employers, as well as individuals exercising the authority, duties or responsibilities of an employer. Your committee does not accept the proposal to expand the definition of worker because the current definition is expansive and covers the elements proposed. Agreed. Your committee notes the proposal to add a definition for the term workplace to mean a public and private spaces where they, they can where they function as place of work, b places where a worker is paid, takes a rest break or a meal or changing facilities, and c employer provided accommodation and transportation, work-related events, trips, training, and social activities. Your committee also notes a proposal that the definition of workplace should include private homes or households. Your committee does not accept the proposal to define workplace as the term is not used in the legislation. I believe we would have had extensive discussions around that also. Chair, Chair. Yes, yes. Um, just a suggestion. Can we then merge that with what we had said earlier? Because it seems like we're repeating um, the same thing, and it's so much more expansive and well explained in this paragraph. I'm just wondering. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm both, I'm both, both paragraphs because we're still dealing with clause two. So why don't we then merge? Link them, link them together. Yes, yeah, yes, Miss McCarthy, because we're still on the clause two. If you could link what we corrected in paragraph 
in that paragraph, um, because my page is not numbered, in that paragraph that we fix, link it with what is here with respect to workplace. So it reads as one. You, you got me, Mrs. McCarthy? Yes, Mrs. Brown. Yes, yes, Chair. All right, agreed. So we now move to part three. Duty to ensure environment free of sexual harassment. The committee notes the proposal. Oh, sorry. Clause three refers to the duty of employers to ensure environment, to ensure environment, you need to fix that, free of sexual harassment in relation to clause three one and the proposal to define the term reasonable offer, the committee does not, the committee agrees that no change should be made to the clause. We note the proposal that sexual harassment in tertiary educational institutions can only occur between students. Your committee accepts the recommendation that sexual harassment in tertiary educational institution may happen between a person who is not a student and a student, uh, not a student, and a student as well as between two students. This is one of the reasons your committee is recommending the inclusion of a provision for the bill to apply to persons who are age 16 years or older. Chair? Yes? Um, I don't, I think that's the correct conclusion, but I don't think that is the rationale for a reach it, for, for, to get into that decision. I think it's all a case where it was a case where in the bill, we only dealt with persons who are employed at these institutions. And we didn't deal with student to student harassment. And that is what I think the committee wanted included in paragraph, in, in, in clause, sorry, Chair. I remember the clause. Yeah, in clause, in clause eight. Because if you look at clause eight one, it just mm -hmm. member of staff opposes a member of staff sexual harassing students, but we didn't have student to student sexual harassment. Right, it never, it never included the student to student. Yes, yes. So I think the part about, um, and we should delete, this is one of the reasons your committee is recommending the inclusion of a bridge of a bill to apply to persons who are aged 16 years or old. I don't think that that is correct. That rationale is correct. So it is, everything is clear except for the rationale given. So I think we can easily stop at between two students and take out that paragraph because that was not. We're we taking out. This is one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons your committee is recommending the inclusion. Yeah. Okay. okay. Proceed. You have that, Miss Mark. Yes, Chair. Um, just to say also that we have, there's another joint select committee that is scheduled for two. So we might be impacted in terms of timing. All right. Um, committee members, can we agree at a time that we can break for today to give persons the opportunity to refresh themselves who have to participate in those committee meetings, that committee meeting. Well, Chairman, it's now 1.15, um, oh, somewhere. One uh, somewhere one fifteen. so I think nothing longer than 10 minutes. Um, if that much, we should really break by that time so that the members can sufficiently refresh themselves and prepare for the next meeting. I, I, I find your, you have set your time a little faster than everyone else. <laughs> Chairman, I did say it is one fifteen somewhere. <laughs> maybe we need, maybe we can agree to break at one fifteen. then. Okay, Chairman, that will be one in another minute. Or, yes. I have one past one. Oh, well, my, my phone and my computer are clearly on different times. But Chairman, you are the Chairman and you go with your, your watch. So. Okay. So can we agree to work up to 1.15 then and to give persons sufficient time? 
The, yes. Your committee also notes the observation made in relation to the use of the word environment in the marginal note of clause three, as it relates to a business place that no change should be made to the clause and whether the employer has a, has a re responsibility to address complaints of sexual harassment between two workers, which occurred outside of working hours and outside of the physical office setting. We agree that once a working relationship exists and an act of sexual harassment is committed by one worker to another outside of the physical workplace or workspace, then redress could be sought under the legislation, but acknowledge that no change is required to the provision. Clause four, duty of the employer and person in charge of institution to issue policy statement. And it says further, clause four addresses the duty of the employer and persons in charge of institution to issue policy statement. Your committee also notes a proposal that a clause should be added for the policy statement to indicate the internal mechanism and procedures available to someone who has been accused of sexually harassing a worker, a student, a resident, a ward, an inmate, a patient, or a member, as the case may be. Your committee does not accept the recommendation for... What's that, Ms. Mack? Um, sir, it's because there was no decision, so I left it oh. for me to decide. Committee members? Any comment? Chairman, can you just repeat that question for me? Sorry, I got sidetracked for a minute. So if you read this particular clause, Go back from the, the other page, Ms. Grant. It's the duty of employer and person in charge of institution to issue policy statement. And it went further. Your committee also notes the proposal that a clause should be added for the policy statement to indicate the internal mechanisms and procedure available to someone who has been accused of sexually harassing a worker, a student, a resident, a ward, an inmate, a patient, or a member, as the case may be. And it says your committee does not accept, ac accept or accepts the recommendations. For no agreement was taken on this, Senator Fraser. Thanks. Thanks, Chairman. Chairman, I, I, I recall at the last meeting, you, um, I don't remember the exact provision that you were speaking about, but um, it had to do, oh, I remember that provision of the tribunal where the 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 um the victim could notwithstanding the existence of internal mechanism, um, could go to the tribunal and there presently they're listed, I think, two areas. And I think through your intervention, there was a consideration for a third area because um they were not satisfied, so to speak, with the outcome of um the decision. And I say that because in the discussion you had then, you mentioned the importance, and I'm paraphrasing, of that internal mechanism and procedure to be made away, um, known to all the workers so that they know exactly what to do in order to get the redress. And if my recollection and understanding of what you said is correct, then my position is that this is a proposal that would be acceptable. I hope I understood you correctly, Chairman. Well, I recall speaking about the, 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 um, the question of the procedures to escalate. And if one was not in agreement with a decision taken in terms of using the internal mechanism, then you could escalate to the tribunal if you, if you still felt agreed. Well, Chairman, I am. I mean, I, I really do not have an objection to to it being included. I do not know what other members think. Any other comment from an, Chair, any other member? 
I, I'm not a committee member chair, but I, I did put my hand up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. In relation to this, because when I look at Paragraph D of subclause three, I think that that's already covered. Because paragraph D, so let me read from three. The policy statement required under this section shall provide for the following. And I go down to D now, which says the internal mechanisms and procedures that are available to a worker, a student, a resident, a ward, an inmate, a patient, or a member, as the case may be, for the making of any complaint relating to sexual harassment and the resolution and settlement of the complaints. I think what was raised by, I don't remember which entity, was that we should, it should be expressly outlined as to, we should say that these should be expressly detailed in the policy statement, but how the paragraph is drafted, it is wide enough to take, to take that consideration in because you're supposed to, indicate the internal mechanisms and procedures available and in, in indicating what procedures and mechanisms are available, you would be required to do, to detail what they are, to, to, to indicate what they are. So in such a case, Chair, I don't think that we would, we would, well, that the committee would have need to accept it per se because it's already covered. It's already covered. And the part that speaks to for the making of any complaint relating to sexual harassment and the resolution and settlement of the complaints. So it expects a finality of some sort. Yes, Chairman, and listening to Ms. Grant, then I am in and looking back at it, I'm in full agreement with her position and go further to say that it would be challenging to to insert, I'm not a draftsman, but uh, you know, I do believe it would be a little challenging to insert the specific mechanism and procedures in the bill. So in that regard, Chairman, I definitely agree with Ms. Grant's position. Thank you, Senator Fraser Davis. Much appreciated. Your committee notes the observation that there, that there was, <laughs> sorry? Senator, I just wonder if Ms. Grant could just repeat the section from which you know. Sure, Mrs. McCarthy, it's section, it's clause four, subclause three, so that's 413, paragraph D. D. D as in dog. Thank okay. you. All right. Your committee notes the observation that there was need for clarity as to the reasons for subclause 41 being subject to subclause 44. Your committee agrees that clause 41 should not be subject to clause 44. The words and comma subject to subclause 4 should be deleted, and subclause 41 should now begin with the words every employer. We note the proposal regarding the need for clarity on the term disciplinary measures in the bill and questions on whether the term means the same as other disciplinary actions, such as suspension, demotion, and dismissal, on the same as the term disciplinary action. In clause 4.3c, your committee does not accept that there is need for clarity and agrees that the issue regarding understanding the term disciplinary measures are addressed in the current versions of the bill. And let me just look at 4.3c. Understood. Your committee also notes the proposal that every employer should be charged with the responsibility to conduct training sessions for new and existing staff regarding sexual harassment. These training sessions should include role play scenarios and ex examinations, thus allowing employees to identify appropriate behaviors at work and that appropriate behaviors that are identified in the training sessions can be rectified. Your committee accepts the recommendation, but agrees 
that provision should be placed in a schedule along with the code of practice. So, we're we are in agreement with that now, as it relates to the code of practice. I think it will be with, along with the policy, the policy statement. And not along with the policy statement. Yes. Right. You, you now recognize that this policy statement it can be expansive. Yes, Chair. OK. Well, based on what Clause 4 says, it is supposed to be expansive, Chair. It is supposed to be expansive. OK. Chair, I think I see Ms. Simon, her um, hand is up. From legal I'm, not see, I'm not seeing those, so I'm asking. Uh -huh. With the readings, I'm not seeing when the hands go up. Yeah, Miss Simon's hand is up, Chair. All right, Miss Simon. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, we I just wanted to say that um, legal reform. We were asked to look at the question of boards, and I just wanted to be able to address that before we close. So, if you could let me know an appropriate time. Well, we have two minutes to the oh. agreed time for closure. So should I? Let me just. So, all right. Okay. Let me just pause right here and, and hear that response. Ms. Simon. Okay, Chair. Um, okay, so what I wanted to say was that um, the department, we have conducted extensive research and examined the relevant laws. Still, we have not been able to find um, provisions for sexual harassment as between board members. Uh, the focus of the bill, in our view, is the prevention of the abuse of a position of power over a person who is in a disproportionate position, such as an employer or a landlord. So for that reason, provision is made in Clause 7, for example, to mandate that an employer or a supervisor who has power not harass an employee. Similarly, a worker must not harass, sexually harass his coworker. The abuse that is being protect, protected here is the fact that the worker has limited options to seek redress and is constrained in responding to sexual harassment. The case of board members though is different, typically board members are the employers and in any event a board member may exercise the option of resigning from the board if the relationship between themselves and another board member becomes untenable um so for this reason um and the fact that they it, no sorry it is for this reason that the the bill did not seek to include that in the the working relationships that are presently provided for um, however, if the committee is minded to include such a provision, then there would be need for the entire scheme of the bill to be changed. The present scheme of the bill is deliberately restrictive and would have to be made more general if board members are to be included. It would no longer be focused on the disproportionate relationship of employer as against employee and such the like. Uh, uh, having regard to the fact that this legislation was arrived at after extensive consultation and research in the development of the policy, the same approach I think would we think would be required here with boards. Um, we would therefore recommend that consideration be given to expanding the, the scope of the law to encompass situations such as between board members at the time when the bill is to be reviewed or in other legislation that may be contemplated that may be more relevant to that relationship. So, all right, so I now understand and this could be identified as a possible recommendation going right. forward. Because right. certainly, based on the scope of the bill right now, and what you have just indicated to us, based on your thorough research, it would change the scope of it altogether. Yeah, that's our opinion. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, committee members, I know there were serious concerns raised around this. I'm chairman. Yes, MP Brown Burke. 
Um, as as usual, I am to be guided, but I'm. Yeah. You know the background that you're using now is one that makes you jump up. I must up. admit that I am. I'm, I'm searching for the word. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm reluctant to accept it. Not that I don't um, believe um, that this is what the research turned up and this is the understanding. Um, I have two concerns. One yes. is that you could very easily still have an issue between a worker, an employee, and a member of the board. And what you're saying, what I'm to accept is that that therefore could not be contemplated given the scheme of this bill. And I find that very, very difficult to accept. Um, I also find it very difficult to accept that the remedy that we would see um, as being appropriate is that someone resigns their position. Yeah. Um, I, if the other members have no difficulty, that's fine. I do have a difficulty and I have to express it, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it now, but I, I have a really, really big problem. And I have a problem because, um, you see, because this kind of um, harassment is so, sexual harassment is so prolific, it is so much a part of our culture. Um, I believe that anybody who is involved in the... Um, arrangements where the board, I remember we had a difficulty about um, defining what would have meant as board, but I find it just difficult that it's not covered here because it, I don't see it in the same way as street harassment. And if you remember my position, I really would have wanted to see it there, but I'm not following with that. I understand um, the rationale behind that. I really don't understand this rationale. I, I never get it though that from Ms. Simon's representation of the matter that the employee to board was an exemption. Where I got it, it was the, in relation to board members and board members. Oh, but that is precisely the point, Mr. Chairman. If we can include um, the board chairman to the employee, I don't understand how we can't. Uh, I remember the, one of the um, examples given was the chairman of the board and a board member, a board member to board member. I, I don't understand why we leave them unprotected. I really don't understand why we would want to. Maybe what we need to understand is to what extent, if the suggestion is being made that it would change the scope of the bill based on the power dimension, I mean, how, what would be the impact of that change to the legislation? But Chairman, that also couldn't quite be true either because we have also done the, what you call that now, the down up where um, we have looked at that, where it is the employee who is um, harassing the employer, we have included that. And so the power dynamics, um, isn't that the same kind of thing? I mean, I, I don't intend to make this a big deal right here. I just want to say that um, I, I, I have, I really find it difficult to accept. And the thing about it, Member Brownberg, is that the other members who would have raised this concern is not here to hear the submission. That well, yes, that's meeting. true. That yeah, that's so that's true too. Let maybe at the here. next meeting, maybe at the next meeting, Miss Simon, you can represent it again and bring any further clarity. Yes, that that that, that yes, I would like that as well. For for uh, for for uh, to allow for yeah, who is that? Mrs. C. I'm in agreement Mrs. with that approach, Chair. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I am. I'm here with the. Director of Legal Reform Activist Wilkins, and she wants to make a comment in relation to um, the things that we're discussing. Here. Um, if you would allow her, Chair. Yes, yes, I would <laughs> never say no to her. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, oh, you do. I am good, thank you. Let me just slide across here. Um, I, I, I have, um, from time to time, been listening to the deliberation of the Joint Select Committee on this matter. And in this particular matter, um, we, we understood the reasoning 
and, and the, the basis of the desire for this provision to be in there. But the problem that we faced was that because it was crafted in such a restrictive manner, it would be difficult to anchor such a provision as it is right now. Um, the, 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 the fact that the relationship between the two people is what determines um, how it is the bill treats with it. It is the fact that you are in a disproportionate relationship. You are, you are more likely to suffer as um, someone who doesn't have any other remedy and you, you, you have to languish because your, your, the consequences to you of raising this matter or even trying to deal with the matter would be devastating. That when you look at those dynamics, it, it doesn't work with board members as between themselves. So am I to understand that the exposure to a more to detrimental impact to the worker are the person in the institution or the person renting accommodation is greater in terms of damages and well-being to as opposed to a board member to a board member who may have equal authority and power that is so and and also the, the, the board member is not without a remedy you can leave the board and without suffering um, financial ruin, given um, the nature of more, most boards are constituted. So it, it would require some broadening of the scope of the bill. And that broadening would essentially result in a redrafting of several provisions. Um, Mrs. C. Brown can, can, can indicate just how much, but um, from the knowledge that we have of how these bills are drafted, it, it's not a simple dropping in a provision. Yeah. It's not. So, so it's not that we're not understanding why you want it. I can see why. The problem is the way this bill has been framed. And that is the point we want to make, which is why we're asking if you would consider instead when the bill is being reviewed or when another law that deals with issues such as those of, to do with boards and governance and relations between boards, if then it could be put in. I'm, I'm just saying that um, I understand very well the, 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 the intent here, but that as we have this bill and where we are with this bill, it's not an easy fix. Okay. All right. Point taken. Thank you. Sorry. Senator Fraser Bins, hand is up. Oh. Senator Fraser Bins. Yes, Chairman. Thank you for that, Chairman, and and thank the Director for that detailed explanation, Chairman. I am. Um, I want to make a contribution, but I am going to, to restrain myself because I think it may be useful um, for us to continue this particular discussion at the next meeting when we have the other members present. Okay. I know Senator Rodriguez, for example, she felt she very strongly who, about who, it. Very and strong, um, right. although she's not here, she's normally present at most meetings. And I, I wonder she had if gone, could... she had gone to join another committee meeting. Right. So, so I want the chairman because I want to save my comments until then, and um, perhaps we could ask the director <laughs> if she could make herself available at the next meeting to give that detailed explanation, which I think it helps us to put things in perspective. And I do have a question for her, but I want to wait until then, chairman. So, so, I, Senator Brown, I mean Member Brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Something, so, <laughs> something's not going to leave you. Know. I know, no, I, I know. I, no, I know. I understand the gravity of the concern. And it was, I mean, it was well represented the last time. Can we just hold in order to have meaningful deliberations around this? Where I, I wanted the minister, to agree with that. I where, wanted to where agree the with minister, that. it would also be here. 
I want, yes, I wanted to agree right. with that, Mr. Chairman. And I also wanted, because I thought that the intervention was really a very good one as well, yes. in terms of explaining what the difficulty um, was. And uh, I, I got a real sense that, that there was an understanding. Not that I didn't think the others did before, mind you, um, of what our concern is. Um, I'm still uncomfortable, but I feel much better um, hearing, you know, the, 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 that perspective um, and explained in that way. In and that it way. would be good, yes, in that way. And it would go, be good, be good also to um, retake the conversation um, at, the, at the next meeting. Right. And I'm in a total agreement with that. So it is against that background that I believe we can break today. Ms. Mack? Mr. Chair, um, the, the chairman is on again, I think. Oh, chairman, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator Gale. Chair, Chairman, <laughs> you, you placed me in a hot seat. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, members and team, I think we, we will have to adjourn at this point because um, we have gone beyond the time that we have been allowed. But members, we really need to complete this process and to have this report ready. Um, the committees of parliament are so active that we can hardly find room because what, what is happening, we end up with clashes and some of our members serve on other committees. We're gonna to try to get some time, possibly on Tuesday morning, unless I have volunteers here now that would want us to look at a semi-retreat over the weekend. Ms. McCarthy, would that be a difficulty? I'm not certain, number. It would be for the members to decide, Minister. No, I'm asking technical, from, technical from, from the parliament, technical team. I would have to speak with the IT department where that is concerned, but I think most, more, the most of it would be for the members and the technical team to be available. Yes, and then for the members, I, I, I know that um, weekend is difficult. For several persons, but we are on a deadline here to complete this exercise. And during the week, we have the challenges in terms of other committees. I don't know if I can convince the chair of one of the other committees to make room for us. I will use my best efforts in, in, in doing so but I just wanted to know if anyone would be, would have a difficulty uh, making room for us to do some work over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, or both. Prime Minister, I, yeah. I just had contact and um, it is not possible for the weekend where the IT department is concerned on I don't know how I would write it out otherwise. So it has to be one day in the week. Chair, Chair, I recall you suggesting last sitting that you would have laid hands on a committee that would be meeting where they would have just started their proceedings, not at the climatic stage of where we are now and if the possibility that they could just give way, give us a time to which, in order to allow us to conclude these deliberations, given the importance of it, given the stages of it, it. That's why we're meeting this morning. That's why we're meeting this morning? Yes, yes. Well, maybe you need to lay hands on another one then, Chair. I'm going to do so. I'm going to make every effort. You know, it's difficult to say no to you, you know, so. <laughs> Senator Gale? Yes. I yes, know sir. you always say yes to me, but I don't know 
if everyone is so inclined. Now, I was talking about where, if you could lay hands to another committee chair. Yes. I'm going to try. I'm going to work on it. Um, possibly Tuesday. Possibly Tuesday morning. And that would be Tuesday morning? Yes. Yes. Possibly <clears throat> Tuesday. So what you're That's what you what you're suggesting to us is to put that in our schedule. Yes, and I will work on it. I I will work really hard. We we um I'll have to check to see how it would impact on members of the committee. However, because I really want the involvement and the input of members, and I'm not sure if it wouldn't affect the the legal team. Right, Ms. Mark? Not in this case because it's not a joint summit committee that's scheduled for Tuesday morning. Okay, fine. Fine. So I will um, use my best effort to, to try to convince the chairman and his committee members to make room for this um, joint select committee meeting. And what time would be looking we we'll be looking at chair? Ms. Mark? Well, that committee is scheduled for 10, but I would suggest we start at 9 just to get um, more time to cover. Yes. So we would Friday. start at 9. We'll start at 9 on Tuesday morning. I would have to join at 9.30. I have a 9 o'clock. Yes. That ends at 9.30. Yes. Based on the schedule. Okay, fine. And I'd ask members to make every effort to read the draft so we can maybe go through a more, you know, a much, much faster, at a much faster pace than we did today. Um, so I think that, I, I don't know, I see Ms. Grant's hand up, Ms. Grant. Chair, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That, that should have come down. <laughs> okay, and MP Brownberg, see your hand? Oh, your hand is, uh, MP Brownberg, I see your hand up. We lost MP Brownberg. Okay. All right, so I would say at this point, I, I don't know if anyone from the legal team from our, our drafters would wish to make a comment before I adjourn, but we are hoping that we can get our meeting going on Tuesday morning to finalize this report. No comment from me, Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Celia Brown. All right, I, I think that silence means consent. So we will adjourn the meeting this afternoon. I really want to thank everyone. I'm, I'm really asking all of you to read the report, the rest of the report, so you can come um, prepared for us to make quick decisions and for us to finalize this document that we have to table in short order or soonest. Okay, so members, thank you very much. And um, no. stay safe. Um, MP Brownberg, are you back? Yes, I am, I am. All right, <laughs> um, I saw your hand up. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that was from the last time. I should have removed it. That was the last I, time. I'm traveling, to, at, I'm made traveling a as well. Point. <laughs> I am I am in transition. <laughs> okay. Okay, no problem. So we meet on Tuesday. We meet at about nine. I'm going to try to convince the team from a committee that's scheduled to meet that morning to make room for us. Okay. Thank okay. you. We appreciate that. All right, thank you. Please okay. read this draft so that we can move quickly through the document. So we okay. can have the report ready.